Hello again and welcome to the video that's going to explain how we construct a perceptual map using Office 365. So what we're trying to do is turn market research image data into a perceptual map that looks something like that, which is our standard two-axis perceptual map that we see in a lot of textbooks. Okay, step one is to ensure we have the data in the right format. Now typically, as I said, it's usually a market research question where we ask, hey, for each brand, how would you rate them on a scale across certain attributes? So the data tends to come to us in a scale form already. Uh, we've just got to make sure that each scale is, is, is the same. And if we want to show different circle sizes on our perceptual map, we also add that. So our data format is the name of the brand and then the uh, score for each attribute. This is dull to exciting. This is limited choice to wide choice, and we're going to make that a small circle. So once we've got that data, we can then move forward into step two, which is inserting a chart. So we go to insert. Down here, we're going to we can use a scatter chart or a bubble chart. I'm going to use a bubble chart. And now we have a blank chart. And then we want to get this data into this chart. So we click on it and chart design. If I click away from it, you see the menu changes. So if I don't have that, you click on it, bring that up and we're going to hit select data. And then what we have to do, unfortunately, for perceptual map is to add these entries separately. So the series name is the brand. The series X is our first attribute. Series Y is our second attribute and our bubble size, I'm just calling it a circle size. So we end up with that, and it tells us brand A, 661, 864, and 1. So that's all correct. And then we just repeat that, and we add a, a second one. Again, series name, first attribute, the second attribute, and then finally the circle size. And you can see that they're starting to populate there already. Okay, I'll just pause the video while I add the other three. Okay, I've added the uh, five brands. As you can see, if I've made a mistake on any of them, I can just go in, edit, and, and pick up um, the correct numbers. Okay, so once I have that, I have a chart that's looking something like this. The next step is just to double check that I've got this correctly because it's, it's a lot of data points to enter. So we just hover over one and it will tell me, as you can see, brand D. 164, 749, and size 7. And I can just repeat that and just check that I've done the data correctly. Okay, once I've done that, I'm just going to scroll across here. And we're going to now format this chart, and here's the steps we're going to follow. Okay, if I click on the chart, I'll bring up this uh, button on the side, the plus button, and I want to add a chart title. And then I can just call it whatever I want to call it. Then I want to uh, re make sure this scale, because you can see that's going up to 10, that's going up to 12, so I don't quite have a square chart. So I'm going to again click on the chart, bring up the plus button, kind of go across to axis, and click on more options. Okay, I've just repositioned the video, and on the right hand side, after we click on axis, we'll have this format axis uh, table that I can go through. I want to make sure that the minimum and maximum align to my scale. So I'm using a 1 to 9 scale. So I go 1 below and 1 below above. So I make it 0 to 10 to make sure that it fits in. Uh, if I was using a 1 to 5 scale, I would probably make that 0 to 6. And I want to put a line in the middle. So I'm going to go down here and go to um, value where I wanted to cross. I'm using a 1 to 9 scale, so 5 is right in the middle. Okay, so that comes up there for the uh, that axis. Now I want, I'm doing the horizontal, I now also want to do the same thing for the vertical. That's been set to 12, so I'm going to change that back to 10, and I'm going to make that 5 as well. Okay, and I have now numbers appearing both ways. I also want to um, remove the tick marks and labels. So I come down here, 
to make sure there's no tick marks listed and labels i want to get rid of those numbers so there's none and also do the same thing for the horizontal none and then change that to none so let's get rid of that so we have a graph that looks like this i now want to get rid of the grid lines so i just only have to click on that we then want to insert data labels. So if we click on the map again, hit the plus button, hit data labels. And as you can see, numbers pop up, which is not ideal. So we're going to click on one of those, go to data labels, go across to more options, and we're going to take the Y value out. We're going to add a series name, take that out, take that out, and make sure that's set to center. And we've got our brand name there, and we just simply repeat that for each of the ones and make sure that the, the formatting is working for us. It's relatively quick to do. Okay, so then we have the map looking like this and all we need to now do is add the attribute labels. So I'm going to bring the, uh, bring it across again. And what we're going to do is click on the map, go to insert, and we're going to put in a text box. And we're going to put the name. So one of the names is doll, which is this one here. And I'm going to put that center it and then move it down to where I want it to appear. And then I just simply copy and paste and then put the next one in. So I will now repeat that while I pause the video. Okay, I've just added all my um, labels and you can format them how you would like. The next step is if you want to modify some of the data. So, so you think brand A is too small, we can just change it here and it automatically changes. If we think one of the brands is in a, the incorrect position, perhaps the data has changed or something like that, we can just adjust it accordingly and it becomes a dynamic map for us. And then we simply copy and paste it as a picture. So we click on the side, copy, I'll bring it down to where our old version was. We're going to paste it as a picture and the reason we do that is because then it's a static one and when we put it into a new document we can copy and paste it and uh, adjust it accordingly and we won't lose any of the, the formatting. So again the, in the link below there's uh, more information and a free template that you can use.